What's up? It's Steve again, and I want to bring you a quick video on how to do a simple process. Well, that's I, I guess it's simple after you've done it quite a few times, but this is my process and how I do uh, Illustrator in detail for like such as this mouth area right here. Because uh, when I first started Illustrator, I was confused on how this actually worked between the fills and the strokes and expanding because I never knew what actually expanding was, which is basically just turning a stroke into a fill and then manipulating it to get the t uh, tapered endpoints and so forth. So what we'll do is we'll start uh, working on this mouth, or I sh I'll say I will, and then you guys can see uh, my process and how it actually works. So normally what I do is I start with the cheek when I do this, and I usually start with a larger stroke. Yeah, I'm gonna get big for detail. And it's pretty crooked looking, but then again, I'm not doing this because this design has already been done once before, so. Anyway, so I usually work in quite a few layers when I do work like this because I copy and paste quite a bit. So, in order to get this to where I want it to be, um, I usually uh, separate everything. But for this, I'll go right here, drag this down, and I'll overextend this uh, lower area, and you'll see why. So beans, I got this uh, mouth open right here. I'm gonna copy it, Control C, and create a new layer, and we're gonna paste it up there too. So beans, I got this duplicate. Ah, clearly I don't. Oh, yeah, yeah, I do. It's there. So what I'll do is um, I'll cut this one where this uh, line right here meets. So I'll cut it there and cut it there. And I'll remove that, remove that. And then what I'll do is I'll connect this where I want it to be. So after I select it up here, I'm going to hold down Alt and then click and drag. Now, um, what you'll run into is these corner points right here. So this will overextend. This piece here will overextend after I expand this piece and make this into a tapered end. And you'll see. So we got this mouth piece right here. Now I'm going to grab uh, this cheek. Uh, control shift right bracket bring it to the very top. Uh, control C. And copy it, then select these two, go to the pathfinder, and select minus front. So that's we have this left right here. Now I'm going to press Control F and paste this back in place here. So now what I'll do is toss this uh, tongue up in here really quick. Doesn't have to be perfect. So now we got the tongue in here. I'm gonna select this mouthpiece, copy that, Control C. I'm gonna select both of these and hit the intersection. That leaves the tongue there. And Control F to paste that back. And I'm gonna uh, hit Control uh, Shift and left bracket, and that's just gonna toss this way in the back behind everything. So now I've got this mouthpiece right here. Now, I mean, you could do this either way. I mean, what I normally do is um, I'll bring this mouthpiece back down in here into the same layer. Bring this to the very front, control, shift, right bracket, copy it, and then clip this right here with uh, the Pathfinder by minus front. And that looks like crap. It's because these aren't open right here, or this is open right here. So. What we could do is actually go back and do the same thing. And select that. Now we could cut these off right, cut this off right here. Or another way that you could do it um, is grab this and expand it. Go to object, expand, and this turns it into uh, a fill. Now, you could push uh, Shift E, you know, and just erase this off right here, if you wanted to do it this way. And then you could uh, 
Then we'll grab the anchor point and go about doing it like this. And, oh shoot. And this is the part that's a pain to do at times, not always. See, the problem with manually doing this this way is um, it's pretty much eyeballing it just to get it right. And then to uh, match the chin down here, I just select this. Now, with this for the tapered line, I mean, you can either just go over here in the profile and select it. Or, I mean, if you wanted to be more precise, uh, I have my uh, the expand set to Control E. It's a lot faster. So just go to Edit, Keyboard Shortcuts, Menu Tools, and if you just type in Expand, see I have uh, Expand to Control E, and then you can just after you ex expanded it, you can just drag these down this way too. But the other way, that uh, we could do this is just by grabbing this and bringing it to the front, control shift right bracket, copy it, and select this, and subtract it, control F to put that back, and you can just grab this and press C and clip it. But one of the reasons I don't like using profiles is because it's not very consistent as in to like how you can control it. So if I do this, see, <clears throat> excuse me. So this is why I like uh, expanding the line. That way I have more control over it to where I can put it where I want. And I don't have to worry about, you know, this, you know, overarching and sticking out. But normally what I would do is, oh, that worked perfect that time. But um, what I would do is I normally have a layer that just has all of uh, the actual live stroke artwork on one. And then I would actually take all the expanded artwork and I put it all on a, a top layer. Or a layer above, I should say. And then uh, when I'm finished with everything, I'd expand the whole thing. So, for instance, I would, well, let me just finish this really quick. So, for the, just for this really quick, I'll just do the profile. But then again, it looks like crap because, you know, the overhang there. So, I'll just uh, control E and expand it. And I'll bring this part in here. Angle this out a little bit. And do that. So, basically, I'd... After, um, the, just, we'll just imagine this whole piece is done right here really quick. And it's all line work. So I would duplicate it. And then what I would do is I would select it all. Make sure it's all expanded. And then I'd go over to the Pathfinder. And add it all together. Now another benefit of doing this is uh, if you wanted it when you start adding more details into it because I normally do I don't know why you know I'll just make it a little bit more pretty um, the best part is this will actually see and snap these and it makes it a lot faster to um, you know add more detail to it because the problem is is if you're actually using the stroke really quick like this you're not going to get that uh, option to snap it to, because what it's going to do is uh, actually snap into the center line or the center of the stroke. So by doing it this way, you're, you get actual. It means more precise.
I mean, all these snap options are in the, was it view? Yeah, smart guides and all the good stuff. So, another, after you have uh, all the slime work done, there, there's, like, there's a lot, tons of ways to, you know, color this, but, um, what I would do is, um, I'd have the live artwork, you know, it'd all be a stroke, um, down below, underneath everything, so, we'll just say, so this is what the ghost, you know, the outline of the ghost. I would actually duplicate this and so I have two of these and like I said one would actually be expanded so I would drag this up here go to object expand you know and add it all together so I'd actually have you know the ability to snap you know along the edge and add more detail to it But on top of that, BNG had this, you know, expanded uh, detail layer. Now I can actually use this live layer right here to do uh, quick color fills. So I can just, you know, just grab blue. And I mean, grab that, I mean, you get the eyes and everything in there too. So you could easily just swap colors out really quick. And what I would also do is add another layer on top, which would be, you know, here's you got your base flat colors, and then the color above, or the layer above is where, you know, you can do your shading and stuff like that. So, this is what I've learned um, personally to uh, work pretty fast. And then you'd have your expanded layer on top that would cover, you know, all the excess overhang from underneath the coloring. So I hope this gives you um, a little bit more of an insight in Illustrator and how to tackle a little bit, you know, a little bit more harder things. Because I, like I said, when I started, I didn't know even where to start. There was never really any tutorials on how to do something like what I just showed you. I mean, I'm not being conceited or anything, but like a lot of the tutorials that I saw were just like, oh, you know, here's a circle. There you go. Oh, here's another circle. Oh, you take these two and add them together, and you're like, oh, that's so cool. But, like, how 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 is everybody else doing this other crap, you know? So, I mean, my progress is basically all trial and error and figuring it out myself. But I hope this gives you a head start into, you know, thinking outside the box and how to accomplish and tackle, you know, issues that you're having with the Illustrator. Um, again, thanks for the support. And if you want to support me a little bit more, you know, hit up my uh, good old uh, Instagram. You can see more of my updated work that's not put on here. But in the meantime,